welcoming back our worldwide viewership and we're coming to you from 177 North 9th Street Proge Gallery. We're gonna run in here and take a look at Ward Shelley's Who Invented the Avant-Garde and Other Half-Truths. Oh man, here's Ward's stuff all packed up. Look, let's see if we can see what's inside here. Oh, there he is. There's Ward. Hey, come on out, Ward. All right, now we're talking to the artist Ward Shelley, and we're going to talk about, I guess we could talk about this piece here, but also your, who invented the avant-garde and other half-truths? Is that, is that the that's, name of the show? That's the name of the whole show. That's the whole show. And it's, okay. it's actually had kind of three bodies of work in the show. There's the timeline paintings, which... Um, who Invented the Avant-Garde is the prime one and probably the other half-truths are also in that timeline category. This back here was called the Sleeper Experiment, but it's nesting within a body of work called the Archive. And what we have actually the now archive. is we've gotten here uh, just at the end, so we've got rid of about half the boxes. There's 880 of these boxes and they were initially considered to be, um, I would say, an externalization of a mind, like a brain turned inside out, in the form of the collection of all your little idea boxes. Yeah, they're a the final last one before so, the end. So they're kind of like metaphors. Interrogation techniques memories. without torture. The theory of the mix. Okay, so you got the whole whole bunch of stuff. And you said there were 800 to begin with? 880 in this, in this group, yeah. It, this archive part is not the work of one man. It's a, a collaboration with a, a guy named Doug Paulson. And you were also, were you living here in your little uh, cardboard box? You know, a little part bit? of the sleeper experiment. And also okay. because I got evicted. Well. <laughs> I had no other place to be that was near a town, so I've been sleeping in that box. During Necessity has uh, driven a lot of creative uh, ideas and processes. Yeah. Okay. And the idea was that I sleep in the in the box and that um, texts that people donated in a random way would be uh, read into my mind by the computer program, which is just a text-to-speech computer program. Very simple. And so we just had the computer set up here, and these these are speakers going in there, and it would just say the things over to me repeating all night long um, in the kind of computer voice like have you noticed any psychotic uh, episodes since then any I got voices or things hearing you I got over it okay. it the, the, actually the first um, week was uh, I was kind of a, like a zombie because the other the thing I didn't mention was that we tried to do it so that people could actually see me sleeping and so therefore I tried to shift my sleeping to daytime so I'd be sleeping here during the daytime and staying up all night and make these drawings. And these are the drawings that I made at the top here. Okay, and, and these relate more to your timeline pieces as well. A little bit, but they're actually almost all the texts on those things and the ideas are based on the stuff that people left in the boxes. Okay. And the idea was to let my subconscious organize the material into cohesive structures, you know, kind of informational structures using time and re repetition while I was supposedly sleeping. So we, that's how it worked out. It did work out on some of them very well, and others it didn't work out so well. Can we take a look at the uh, timeline drawings too? Yeah, let's go there. They're the kind of the, the meat. So this one is called Addendum to Alfred Barr, and in some way it is a, it's a reference to... His very famous, was, right, it was timeline before, chart. It was actually made by a guy named Alfred Barr who many of you will know is the original director of the Museum of Modern Art. And he made a chart that showed the relationship of all the art, art movements, movements in the first, of the 20th century. In the first 30 years of the 20th century. And it right. started with like post-impressionism and some international sources like Japanese prints, African sculpture, Middle East drawing. And he made them all follow the schools that everyone is so familiar with, like Cubism and Fauvism and Constructionism, Constructivism rather, Dada, Surrealism, and that was really his idea. And so, and I then you've extended this out into time forward, also backwards into the 40s, 
Into the 50s, we've got conceptualism, installationalism, neoconceptualism, appropriationism. Yeah. And, and going it, back, Impressionism, realism, Barbizon school, romanticism. Yeah, the beginning of the enlightenment. The beginning of this split into schools is between neoclassicism and romanticism, really. Well, you know, there are some other people that are interested in this kind of work. Do you have a uh, a title for this? Any kind of a, a type of subheading that you would put this under? This kind of uh, art historical diagrammatic work. No, but I tried some. They sound pretty bad. I tried. I called them my rhetorical drawings at one time. Rhetorical drawings. How about the informationalists? Is that does that work for you? Well, it, I mean, it's going to spread. You know, <laughs> people just tend to call them my timelines. Timelines. Um, but information is probably the, they fall under. There's the other buzzword that comes up a lot is mapping, because there are these mapping. Are, these are, are this is kind of a mapping. Can we take a look at the uh, feminist art one? I thought that was pretty yeah. interesting. Yeah, that's over here. So this one. I was very impressed with this one because you've uh, really selected out quite a uh, broad history of female artists that were not widely known or widely recognized. How many people do you have on this list? Uh, there's about 350, 400 350, 400 people. And, the, and there was, I made a, this was based on a rule, I made a rule. And the, the rule was um, I was going to spend a certain amount of time because there's, if you decide you're going to do all the female artists, these are like American female painters between the time of Impressionism to the beginning of the second wave feminist movement, which was the one that we're most familiar with. It started, it was kind of rolling in the 60s and the 70s and continued. Are you talking actually the post-feminist movement? They call it the second wave feminists. Second wave feminism. Like okay. Judy Chicago, that kind of stuff. That was all that they call second wave feminism. Because original feminism was the back... The essentialists. Was a, the suffragists. The, oh, that, okay. All right. That was the beginning. The suffragists and the, getting the voting rights and things like that. So this was that, that, that stretch of time and all the women whose work I could find in books have their name in green. And all the women whose names I could find on the internet are listed below. And each one of these green pieces is actually the, shows the birth and death. You take a line, and this is the line here, and this is Jane Peterson, and she lived, I don't know, into about Pretty 1950 long time. something. Yeah. Which is actually not that long, this is really, yeah. Um, Grandma Moses is from 1860 to, she died, she, she lived into the into uh, the 60s, so she lived over 100. That's the, that's the longest line, but that's I That's why they called her grandma. That's why they call her Moses. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, so that's, so it's, it's really an aggregation that shows their relationship to either schools that they worked in or from, like some were more impressionistic, some were more abstract, and, was more, and, and they sort of swim around. These and then what other lines. kinds of rules did you have as far as the, the criteria for the, the women that you selected? Well, they had to be women, they had to be American, they had to be painters. And I threw a few sculptors in there because they're just, everybody knows them and I just had to have them in there. But that was the, it was those three rules and then could I find them within the amount of time that I gave myself to do it, which is a couple of months, you know. And then right. I, this, I had to just like book in it that, that way, otherwise it would go on forever. That's right, it would be on and to infinity. Let's take a look at some of your other pieces. Let's do Frank Zappa. Okay. So this is a, lot, a little bit different because it's more about pop culture. The, the ones on this wall here are, are less art historical and more about popular cultural historical. Media. Yeah, and, okay, and this is about Frank Zappa. He kind of defined what uh, an artist's relationship was to his work and to his audience. Well, I um, think there's also an aspect of Dadaism that he was bringing into rock and roll and uh, yeah, comedy, true. humor. Oh, sure. Drama. Okay, well, look, Ward. Thanks for giving us a chance to uh, have a glance at your show. What's the title again? Who Invented the Avant-Garde? And Other Half-Truths. And Other Half-Truths here at Pierogi. All right, you can close the doors now. Okay. <laughs> We're done. All right. Thanks, Kate. <laughs>